There is absolutely no doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic was a curveball we all didn't see coming. And if you're a business owner, then the economic effects of the pandemic may still be causing you distress, anguish, and uncertainty in your business. If you have or feel you are soon about to stop trading, or if you've simply just had enough through your limited company and are wondering about your what next options, then stay tuned. In this video, we will cover keeping your company open, active and repurposing it, switching your company to dormant status, putting your company into a solvent liquidation with a free guide, putting your company into a insolvent liquidation, and finally, can you actually sell your business, an often overlooked option when it comes to exiting. So be sure to watch right to the end of this video. Before I get into today's video, be sure to visit our Accounting and Tax Academy membership area where you can get access to exclusive in-depth courses, templates, calculators, and a members Q&A section where you can get your specific accounting and tax questions answered by a qualified accountant or chartered tax advisor. Now, this might sound counterintuitive, but if you have stopped trading, then keeping your company open and active is still an option. Why and what for, you may ask? Well, it depends on your circumstances, and this option will only work for you if your company is solvent, which simplistically means it's able to pay any debts as they become due, such as HMRC's tax bills and other creditors. And if you're not planning on using your company for the same trading activity that has just stopped, then you can repurpose your company for a different trade or activity. For example, if you are a one-fee earning contractor of your limited company, your contracts have ended and you're not looking to go back into it, you decide you want to start a new e-commerce business soon selling online through Amazon, you can repurpose your existing company actually to do this. Now to execute this, there is a procedure and it's something you can find out more about in our Accounting and Tax Academy membership area. So what exactly is dormant status for your limited company? The company's house official definition is if it's had no significant transactions in the financial year. Now, significant transactions don't include filing fees paid to company's house, penalties for late filing of accounts, money paid for shares when the company was incorporated. And according to HMRC, your company is dormant when you do not receive a notice to deliver a company tax return or are not expected to deliver a company tax return. Remember, you can only file dormant accounts from the beginning of the next company year. So let me explain this with a bit of an example. If your company year end is the 31st of March and you cease trading on the 2nd of February of the same year, then you cannot declare or make your company dormant from the 2nd of February. Even if you do not trade between the 2nd of February and the 31st of March for the company year to the 31st of March, you will have to file sufficient accounts and company tax returns to both Companies House and HMRC. However, if by definition your company remains dormant in the next company year, so the 1st of April to the 31st of March, then your company can file dormant accounts to Companies House and doesn't need to file a company return to HMRC. However, you will will need to notify HMRC in advance that your company will be dormant. The advantages of placing your company in dormant status is that there is actually less filing and compliance requirements and most likely fees as a result. It keeps your company on ice and allows you to retain any assets, both tangible and intangible, such as the company name. If you feel you no longer need your limited company or just don't want it anymore, then liquidation is perhaps the most viable option. Remember, you cannot just close your company by filling in a form and just walking away. There are generally two options available, an informal voluntary strike-off and a member's voluntary liquidation. The former is fairly straightforward and is often suitable for companies that have up to £30,000 in distributable funds, whilst the latter is more involved and advisable for companies that have at least £30,000 in retained distributive funds or assets or more as the tax options are more favourable. A member's voluntary liquidation has to be carried out by a licensed insolvency practitioner, so it's not just something you can tackle yourself. Now, with either of these two options, there's a lot to consider, and we've put together a free helpful guide to give you an insight into solvent liquidation options, as well as some more information about the associated taxes and how to get started. Click on the link to head to our website and download the guide for free. 
An insolvent liquidation is the tricky one. By definition, an insolvent liquidation means that a company is closing because it cannot pay its bills as they fall due or the value of the business assets is less than its liabilities. Now, there's two broad scenarios here. Either your company is forced into liquidation by a creditor, that is another company or person whom a limited company owes money to, and this is known as a compulsory liquidation. Or you as a director instruct what is known as a creditor's voluntary liquidation or a CVS. When your company is forced into a compulsory liquidation, quite often affairs are tense and your costs as a company owner will probably be higher due to the legal action creditors are likely to take against your company. We can only strongly recommend that you avoid this route as best as you can. If your creditors are starting to threaten and turn up the heat with regards to the money your company owes them, then it's always best to open a dialogue with them. However, if your company genuinely cannot pay its creditors or you calculate the cash will run out soon and the ability to pay will be compromised, then considering a creditor's voluntary liquidation may be the best option for you in your business. Is this really an option? I get asked this question all the time. Even if you're a one-person director employee with no future revenue or profits, and what if your company has debts it cannot pay? Well, in theory, yes, it is possible in any situation to sell your business and company. It all depends upon whether there is a willing buyer who wants something your business has. Now, let me clarify here that selling your company entails the sale of all the share capital. So in other words, the business and company as a whole. There is also what's known as a sale of assets, which is different from a sale of share capital. So what is it a prospective buyer could want from you and your business? For the most part, prospective buyers will want a profitable company with assets and a future revenue or profit stream. That's traditional economics. But not all buyers. Some buyers may want other tangible or intangible assets your company has, such as a client list, intellectual property, or a concept they cannot copy easily, a license to a product or distribution service they cannot get easily, and even if your company name could have a value for someone. So in reality, not many limited company business owners even explore this option. And if you don't even try, then who knows if this could have been a missed opportunity. I hope this video has helped you consider your options if your business has come to the end of its journey and taken you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this really does help us to get our content out there. This is Tony D'Angelo for the Accounting and Tax Academy. As always, thanks for tuning in.